This happened when I was a kid, around seven years old. I'd gone out into the woods with a bunch of other kids who lived in the neighborhood to gather acorns and hazelnuts. Most of the kids were a year or more older than me, so I was one of the smallest kids there. The kids were racing through the woods, laughing and playing. I was struggling to keep up with them, not only because of my size, but because I had twisted my ankle the day before and was nursing a slight limp. After we'd been out there for several hours, it started to get a bit dusky in the wood, and some of the older kids announced it was time to head home. But I couldn't keep up with the others, and they kept yelling at me to hurry up. I was getting worried that I would be left behind. The light was slowly fading from the woods, and soon I lost sight of the other kids completely. I thought I could still hear them up ahead and continue to follow the sound of their voices, but the voices kept getting further and further away. Soon all was silent. I walked in the silence for a long time. Then, as I was lopping along, I thought I saw one of the boys waiting for me under an oak tree. I was relieved at first, but as I got closer, I realized it wasn't one of the kids I had been with. It was someone I had never seen before. A boy. He was about the same size as me, but it was hard to tell how old he was. He was dressed in clothes that were covered in green moss and had a cap of red fur on his head. And he had a weird smell about him, like he had been smeared in the essence of all the trees from the woods. The boy looked at me in a friendly way and asked where I was going. I'm going home, I said. There was something about this boy that frightened me and my teeth started to chatter. Well, I'm going your way, said the boy. So if you like, you can come along with me. I hesitated. He could tell I was frightened. You recognize me, don't you? Your old Uncle Ned, who lives by the wood. I'm his son. We're cousins. I didn't know Uncle Ned, but I thought I'd heard my mother mention him. So I calmed down a little, but still didn't like the look of this boy. He kept me talking, asking me a series of questions about the things that I liked. I told him how much I loved animals. I kept linnets and magpies in cages, and I even had a box full of hedgehogs. But I'd never caught a squirrel. They were too quick for me. But I loved squirrels so much and wished to have one as a pet more than anything in the world. When the boy heard that, he said that if I came with him, he'd soon give me what I wanted. He said he'd been climbing trees and had caught a squirrel and trapped it in the basket he'd carried his dinner in. I didn't know what to do. It was getting late and there was something about this boy that worried me. But then I thought of the squirrel and how much I wanted one. So I said to the boy that I'd go with him and get the squirrel, but that I couldn't be long or my parents would know that I'd lost my way and would come looking for me. The boy's eyes seemed to glisten. He set off through the wood, and I followed him. The wood was full of great oak trees, with birch set amongst them. After a while, we got to a pool in the middle of the wood. It was no bigger than a duck pond, but the water was deep. And all around the pond was a ring of aspen trees, with their boughs hanging over the water. The sky had been overcast earlier, but the wind had swept the clouds away, and the moon lit up the trees and made the water glisten like silver. The boy settled down by the water, and I did the same, and we started talking again. I asked him why he was covered in green moss. If you were to climb trees the same way I have, answered the boy, then you'd be covered with moss too. 
And why do you wear a cap of red fur? I asked. Why shouldn't I wear a fur cap? My mother makes them from squirrel skins, and they're warm in the winter time. When I heard the boy mention the squirrels again, it reminded me to ask about the squirrel in the basket. Wait a while, the boy said, and I'll show you more squirrels than you've ever seen in all your life. The boy then took a penny whistle out of his pocket which looked to have been whittled from a slim ash branch. He put it to his mouth and blew two or three notes. There was some noise from nearby, and soon half a dozen squirrels appeared on the branches of the aspens. When I saw the squirrels in the moonlight, I was beside myself with excitement. I looked at them, they looked at me, and their eyes were as bright as glowworms. All the while the boy played his whistle, and more and more squirrels kept coming through the trees. You could hardly see the branches now for all the squirrels. It was as though all the squirrels in the forest had heard the tune, and were forced to follow the sound. They made no noise or fuss, but sat down on the branches, pricked up their ears, cocked their tails over their backs, and kept their eyes fixed on the boy. When the boy decided he'd summoned enough squirrels, he changed his tune. The tune he played became disjointed and strange. Sometimes it was like the howling of the wind down a chimney, sometimes like the curlews and lapwings up on the moors. But when the squirrels heard the tune... They lined up on the branches. Then they jumped from tree to tree, right around the pool, with their tails set straight out behind them. They were close together. It was like a great coil of rope spinning around the water. All the time, their faces turned towards the boy, and their eyes were blazing like burning coals. Round and round they went while I just held my breath and watched them. I'd seen horses riding around a ring at a fair, but that was nothing compared to the squirrels spinning around this pool. After a while, I thought the boy would stop playing, but he did nothing of the sort. Instead, he played even faster, keeping one eye on the squirrels and one on me. The faster he played, the faster the squirrels jumped. And before long, the tune was more like a shriek than a dance tune. I had never heard anything like it before. It was as though all the devils in hell had been let loose and were being blown through the sky above, shrieking. I was so frightened my teeth started chattering again, and every limb on my body was shaking like the aspen leaves on the trees around the pool. Soon, small bats descended on the pool and were fluttering over the water and swooping so close to me that they almost brushed my cheek with their wings. But I still couldn't take my eyes off the squirrels. I felt like I was under some sort of spell. I put my hand to my head, and it felt as though I was spinning around and around myself. I started to think that that was what this boy wanted, and why he'd set the squirrels going. He couldn't do anything to me while I had my senses, but if I was to get giddy enough to drift off into a daydream, then the boy would have me in his power and be able to turn me into a squirrel. I was convinced that this was what was happening, that if I couldn't snap out of this trance, I would become another one of those enslaved squirrels. I felt my head getting woolly, and I started to think I was falling asleep, and I was unsure where I was anymore. I decided I must be lying in bed at home, drifting off to sleep without saying my prayers. 
My mother was very religious and had taught me a prayer to say every night before going to bed. I tried to say that prayer, but couldn't remember the words. All I could call to mind was something that I'd heard the other kids say on their way home from school. I thought it was more a bit of fun than a prayer, but I started to say it anyway, as loud as I could. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, bless the bed that I lie on. All of a sudden, the boy stopped playing. The squirrel stopped jumping. The bats stopped flying over the pool. The moon hid behind a great thundercloud, and the wood and the water were as black as a boot. Then there came a scuffling and a shrieking all over the wood. The squirrel started spitting and swearing like mad. The wind yowled, and there were all sorts of strange noises overhead. Then, after a minute of complete chaos, the moon came out bright from behind a cloud, and I looked around. But there was nothing to see. The boy was no longer next to me, and there was not a squirrel left in the trees. All I could see was the aspen leaves blowing in the wind, and tiny waves on the pond lapping against the bank. I was trembling with cold and hunger, and I started crying, but I had enough sense to start shouting for help, and before long there came an answer. My father and the other kids from the village had been looking for me all over the woods. He found me and took me home where I stayed in bed for several days. It was a long while before I was able to tell anyone what had happened. I believe that that day in the woods I met Melsh Dick, a fairy who's supposed to guard the haunted groves and hazel shaws. Melsh Dick was said to be kind once, but that the reckless felling of young trees made him mean. I've heard stories of children who have gone into those woods never to be seen again. I think I was almost one of them. Thanks for watching. This story was relayed in the book More Tales of the Ridings by F.W. Mormon. It was communicated to the author by a man whose family had for generations worked as woodmen in Boland Forest, an area rich in legend. I edited the story to modernize the language and for clarity style and narration reasons. If you have a story to share, you can check out my website at scaryfairygodmother.com, link in the description. It has a spot where you can submit your stories, comments, questions, or suggestions. You can also sign up for my mailing list there. It's free to sign up. As always, special thanks to all my supporters on Patreon and to anyone who has joined the channel or made a one-time donation through PayPal or Coffee. I really appreciate you guys so much and the support you are giving this work. If you like this content and would like to support it, please check out my Patreon page and other support options in the description below. Please leave a comment below, like, share, and subscribe if you're new. It really helps the channel when you do so. And hit the bell to receive notifications of new videos. And until next time, this has been a visit from your scary fairy godmother. <laughs>